everyone. Um, our topic for discussion today is how to master your time. So this is my partner, Helder and Kiara, and we came up with three elements that we think affect our time management negatively. So those three would be procrastination, distraction, as well as multitasking. So what can we do in order to maximize our time? Um, as we've all heard before, you know, there are apps that, are, that will be able to help us. I mean, we all know what we need to do, but we just won't do it. So um, this is the survey that we took in class. Um, people who suffer from procrastination tend to you know, have a negative outlook on life, as well as um, have increased anxieties, as well as irrational behaviors. So based on the survey, roughly 77% of you guys have uh, experienced non-motivational procrastination. So one answer in particular um, stood out to me. They said that they, they couldn't comprehend or understand the importance of the task that they had at hand, which caused them to procrastinate most of the time. So what is procrastination? Procrastination is the act of delaying or prolonging something. And what people don't understand is procrastination is actually a chronic illness. So based on a university prof psychology professor, Joseph Ferrari, he said when you um, tell a chronic procrastinator that to just do it, it's like telling a clinically depressed person to just cheer up. And that's not how it works. So I came across a, a TED talk uh, by Tim Urban, and he explained procrastination using three characters. So um, the first character would be the rational decision maker. The second would be the instant gratification monkey. And the third would be the panic monster. So inside the procrastinator's mind, there is a rational decision maker, but he has to coexist with his instant gratification monkey uh, pet. So pretty much the monkey is selfish, he's self-centered, and he, he's only concerned about the ease and the pleasures of the current moment. So it makes it nearly impossible for the rational decision maker to, you know, um, complete any type of task that it's given. So to keep him in check is the panic monster. The panic monster, which uh, uh, is pretty dormant, uh, but he wakes up when there are deadlines that are close or if there's a fear of danger of public embarrassment <laughs> and, or any other scary consequences that we may encounter in life. But our goal is to keep that instant gratification monkey in check. Um, but the panic monster is not always there to keep him in check because we don't set those deadlines for ourselves. Um, so how do we defeat this monkey? One, you've got to know yourself. You've got to know your weakness and then plan it into the schedule that we're trying to overcome. And we need to check or change our perspective. Uh, we need to identify our goals as well as see them as challenges rather than just obstacles. Um, you also need to move yourself to an environment where you know that you're going to be productive, like, say, a library or a study room. At the same time, um, you need to make effective planning. And what that means is you need to create a visual list of things that you need to do, as well as um, rank them from most important to least important. So uh, if the task is too large, just divide them up into smaller tasks that you know that you're able to obtain. And at the same time, reward yourself after that. Um, then you also need to talk yourself positively, because as I said, people in the survey talk negatively about themselves. And um, you need to internalize that you are in control. Everything that you do is your choice. And lastly, you need to forgive yourself. Um, I mean, nobody's perfect in this room, and we all have that instant gratification monkey. Uh, and we're prone to distractions. And speaking of distractions, I'm going to hand it off to my partner, Elder, and he'll talk more about it. Thank you. All righty. Distraction. <laughs> How many of you sit down to study, and then you start studying, and then you get distracted with your phone, and after an hour you're supposed to be studying, you're on page one, because you're on your phone checking your Facebook. How many of you relate with that? Yeah, a lot of people <laughs> do, huh? 
Okay, yeah, distraction. I bet this is very distracting for the professor seeing the students <laughs> texting all the time, right? Alrighty, our survey. What our survey found? So, one third of us said that we do set time, do not set time to do work, and two thirds said yes. And then again, two thirds said that you they, they do get distracted easily. And then I, I, I added up the far too much, moderate and slightly too much, that people that said they, they, they get distracted by their cell phone, and then it's three-fourths of y'all said yes. And while everything that's happening, most of us do not turn our cell phones off while studying. Why is that? Good question, huh? <laughs> Distractions. It's all around us. Uh, let me tell you something. Time management, it's baloney. If you do not know how to manage your, your mind and how it wanders off, period. I mean, in the, in the age of distraction, writing things down cannot compete with million things that's flashing on your face trying to get your attention. So in order for us to do that, we need to, to take an active approach to avoid it. Right? Because otherwise you're not going to go anywhere. But with technology pushing information through our cell phones every time, whether we want it or not, we need to shield ourselves from all that information that's coming in and then it's attacking our attention. Attention is at the root of everything. If you think about it, attention is more valuable than money. Well, why do you say that? In order for you to sell something, you need to grab somebody's attention, don't you? Right? And in order for you to accomplish something, you need to fight everything that's trying to get your attention in order for you to do to accomplish that thing for that day, for your job, for your homework, whatever you have to do. So, you ask yourself, how do you, how do you How do you manage that? How do you control that? So, everyone needs time off to get off the grid, first of all. Set aside 20, 30 minutes, chunk of time, focus, focus, to get things done. You're gonna get much farther than two hours, you've set two, three hours of interruption, of interruption. Focus on your role priorities versus your task priorities. When you get hired for that job, you're gonna you, you're gonna get hired for the role that you hired for. Therefore, do not waste your time getting distracted on your phone, on your laptop. Focus on that. Streamline where you keep track of your priorities. Some of us have have things right written down on a piece of paper, sticky notes, on your fridge, on your Google, everywhere. Trying to keep that in one place. Use apps if, if you need it. Or use one planner for everything. Don't have it everywhere. And also, watch out for the skim and, sh skim and skip email trap. When you think about it, <clears throat> when you set the period of your, your time to, to get things done, and then you get later on to your email. Some of us take a look at it, start going through emails, and they're like, oh, I'll get to that later. And then later never comes, and then these file, email piles up, right? So set a, set a time for you in your schedule to get those responses to those emails. And make sure you do. I have a, we'll have a professor here that, that's really bad. And every time you email her, she never responds back. Don't, don't be that, that professional. It's very unprofessional. So I'm not going to talk to Pat on Chip here. I should not talk about multitasking. That's right. Okay. First of all, I'd like you to get involved so you don't go as late for this early morning. I gave you this piece of paper, and uh, I'm going to prove you that multitasking is uh, not a positive skill. How? Okay, I'm going to take the time with my phone, and I want to do first complete part one. So go ahead when I tell you start. Take your pen and start on line one, copying the sentence. Don't do it. Hold on. 
I'm going to attempt to say start. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know it's exciting. Okay. On line two, when you're done copying the, the sentence, multitasking is worse than a lie, move on part, uh, on line two and start writing the numbers from 1 to 27. Okay? That's part one. Easy. Got it? You're early? Okay. Let me tell you. Whenever the first one will finish, please raise your hand. So I'm going to stop the timer. Okay? Ready, steady, go. Good done. Uh, take longer 
it uh, actually makes you spend more than 50% of the time uh, when you're doing something. Uh, and of course, another consequence is dropping your productivity by up to 40%. And uh, also lower your IQ by 10 to 15 points. So these are all reasons why multitasking is not uh, uh, positive. But I really want you to take this away from you today, which is please do not try to multitask anymore. Scratch it off from your resume because it is not a positive skill to have. But in order to have a little summarize of what we talked today, I'm going to pass it to Halder and so on. Okay, so takeaways from this presentation. Other procrastination. Know yourself. Plan accordingly. You are in control. Remember that. Distraction. Manage your mind. Remember that. With manage your mind. Get away from the distraction. Set yourself goals throughout the day so you can accomplish that. Your priorities. She looked away from any distractions. Multitasking. Focus on one, one thing at a time. Try not to multitask because you're going to get more things done. Park your strangeness, thoughts aside. Do you have any questions? Mm -hmm.